Hello. Here we're going to discuss uh, an interesting topic uh, in fatigue design. Suppose that we have a component that has an alternating uh, stress, but the alternating stress has a maximum minimum. In other words, it's not symmetric about the uh, uh, time axis, uh, and it displays asymmetry, which means that the stress itself as a function of time can be considered as, uh, as the sum of two uh, components. One is a pure alternating component, and the other one is like a steady uh, stress uh, that is applied uh, all the time. So the question that we will discuss today is that how can we uh, assess or combine the damage uh, due to these two and then determine the lifetime uh, of, the, of the component. We also will uh, first look at uh, the situation for an infinite lifetime. So we'll design a component where we consider an infinite lifetime. And uh, then uh, we determine the, the factor of safety for that. And then we will move on to determine uh, the finite lifetime in case we have uh, a, an alternating stress that is uh, significantly above uh, the endurance limit. So let's look at some of the uh, concepts here and move on to define how we can estimate the damage. So as you can see here, we have uh, the fatigue cycles uh, when you have a, a component uh, under, uh, let's say, an alternating stress. The alternating stress in reality is going to be, uh, has fluctuations here and uh, it ha in principle these are all uh, it's very tiny small cycles so we would uh, essentially replace that with a uh, smooth uh, very small fluctuations and uh, we would consider a uh, fatigue cycle or a stress cycle that has a maximum and a minimum as you can see here another can a situation is that if we have cycles that repeat themselves that are uh, quite uh, uh, different, then we would have to go back and isolate uh, part of the cycle that can be uh, considered uh, uh, or parametrized and the other part will be parametrized with a maximum minimum. So the idea is that uh, to deal with these uh, practical uh, applied stress, which is on this side, so all of these are practical, then we would have to consider uh, an idealized way uh, to uh, represent cycles. And the idealized way, if you look at it, we will define first um, a uh, stress cycle, and the stress cycle will go from a minimum to a maximum. So if you look at this, you'll see that the minimum stress is sigma and min here, and the uh, uh, alternate, the alternating stress is the amplitude uh, of the uh, fluctuating component and then we have also a maximum stress. In addition we have the average value as you can see here is essentially uh, the mean stress is sigma m. So we can characterize any general fluctuating stress cycle with um, sigma min and sigma max. If we know these two, then we will be able to determine uh, the sigma mean and we can also determine sigma alternating. In other words, we can determine the uh, amplitude of the stress cycle and also the average value that we would consider to be steady and uh, continuous all the time. Uh, we also remember here that the simplest case for material testing is the completely reverse case and in this case sigma mean is equal to zero uh, under testing conditions. So we want to move on from this situation here to a situation where we have a, a mean value of the stress, applied stress, and an alternating component that is described by uh, the amplitude. So let's just move on to, to see uh, how we will discuss those. Um, and the idea is that we will consider the concept of fatigue damage. And fatigue damage is that 
uh, the damage is a uh, is a kind of a, an assumed concept where uh, the ratio of the component of the stress divided by some kind of a, an assumed maximum this ratio uh, can represent a fraction uh, of the damage in other words if I have the alternating component of the stress described by the amplitude and I divide this by the uh, endurance limit then this fraction here uh, can be considered a fractional damage to the material that will have to be taken into account and then if I have an additional uh, type of loading like uh, an average stress that is applied in the material the mean stress uh, in this case the ratio of the mean stress divided by uh, the yield uh, point for example or the ultimate uh, stress for example then this ratio can be taken as a fractional damage as a result of the mean component of the stress so these are the this is the concept where we will add up the damage fraction due to each one of these and then when we add them up the sum of all of these fractions should not exceed one uh, at the end of the day so if you look here you'll you see that um, we have um, first to characterize uh, the mean stress we can uh, write it as the average value of the maximum and the minimum and uh, the alternating stress is the difference between the maximum and the minimum divided by two so these are very simple to to show from here and uh, once we have these two uh, new components then we can either use sigma max and sigma min to characterize the cyclic behavior or we can use sigma mean and sigma alternating so these two are equivalent to these two the transformation is right here which comes from simple uh, consideration of what is average and what is uh, the amplitude um, so once we have that uh, we're going to define a few uh, more parameters that describe uh, the stress cycle. We define the stress ratio, R, or the R ratio, as the minimum divided by the maximum. So that means, it's a what some people call it reversal ratio, which means that this, the, the value of the bottom of the hill divided by the top of the hill. This R ratio can tell us how deep the hills are. For example, R ratio for R is equal to zero. It means that the minimum is actually sigma min is equal to zero. So in this case, we immediately know that for R ratio equal to zero, we have this kind of uh, uh, loading situation and so on. So if you have R equals minus 1, R equals minus 1 will be something like fully reverse where the minimum and maximum are the same but with negative the minimum is minus uh, the maximum in this case. So this is R equals minus 1, this is R equals 0 up here. Uh, another uh, parameter that's related to uh, the uh, alternating and the mean is the amplitude ratio A and the amplitude ratio is the uh, ratio of the uh, amplitude of the stress fluctuation divided by the mean value so the larger this ratio if A is large then we, it means that the alternating is very strong the alternating is, is strong. It means that we have to consider fatigue very seriously. But if A is very small, then it means that we are almost steady state or steady loading uh, in this case. So immediately from A, we would know that we should either we should consider fatigue seriously or that it is insignificant if the alternating component is uh, quite small. So uh, the uh, next step is that uh, we need to discuss is uh, uh, what happens in actual design when you have an applied 
uh, stress state uh, that has that you have now described with an alternating component and a mean component, and then you have a uh, a region that you, that has stress concentration. You know what do you do there? So the the procedure or the design procedure is that we would consider the alternating and the mean components that are applied far away from the uh, region of stress concentration as uh, we would call nominal values. So we have a nominal value for the alternating and a nominal value uh, for the mean uh, stress. So the nominals, we're going to give them the subscript zero, meaning away from the disturbance. As we come close to the area of stress concentration, suppose that it is the shoulder region with a fillet on a shaft. So this region will have a significant stress concentration factor depending on the uh, notch sensitivity factor that we talked about. So suppose that you found that K sub F uh, is say uh, 1.6. This means that the nominal values that are applied far away from the notch or from the uh, fillet should be amplified by the fatigue stress concentration factor because they're local and then that would we would use that to modify both uh, the, uh, the alternating component of the stress and the mean component of the stress. There are different design mes methods that can assign different values for the effective uh, stress concentration factors but for our purposes, we will use just one single uh, stress concentration factor for both uh, 